this morning we we have seen the, the first layer of the model so it's not really our business and now so we are going to see what we have in this layer so as I said this morning we have several things to do we have to create a PDU so PDU is uh, limited size so we have to cut a flow of information to detect some uh, block of information for PDU. So we have to do that. We have usually to detect errors. So we have to find a way to, to detect when you have a transmission error, but something goes wrong during the transmission. And uh, as I said before, especially in that case, it's not always the case, for example, with local area network, but in the OSI model, since we have point-to-point -point links <coughs> between two uh, devices, then we don't really need addresses at this layer, or at least in the OSI reference model vision. For local area network, it will be a little bit different. So, what we are, you are going to do this afternoon, we are going to, to learn about French cuisine, because we are going to define a protocol, a stupid protocol, or we are going to have a stupid example, and we are going to try to send a recipe on a network, and the network we are going to, to use is the postal network. So, if we look on <coughs> what we have seen uh, this morning, if we use the reference model paradigm, so what do we have? We have a network. How do you access to the network? You use some well-known uh, point, entry point on the network, which are mailboxes. So here we have a cook, and the cook wants to learn to a student how to make an omelette. So, of course, the student knows nothing about uh, omelettes. So, the cook will send the recipe using the postal network. So, we'll send data request, but say... <coughs> okay, part of the recipe. We cannot send uh, all recipe in one letter, because you know that omelette is a very complex thing to do and you need very precise instruction and so you need several letters to do that so we will have these three letters and if you uh, I put uh, so something very important especially for master of science when you put something on the slide you always have to add the reference where you got the information from so here the omelette recipe can be uh, found on that uh, website. So, here you have the omelette recipe. Of course, you have to buy some eggs. Then you have to crack the eggs and uh, uh, beat it until they turn to a pale yellow color. And then you cook them. Okay? So, that's what we want. So, that's what the cook wants to teach to the student. Okay? So, we are going to use the postal network, and so what are the properties of this network? This network is very useful because it changes the nature of my communication. I can just say, give letters to people around me, and here with the postal network, I can give letters to people that are not close to me. So that's a benefit, but there is also some, uh, some drawbacks. Can you list some uh, some drawback of the postal network? Slow. Slow, yes. So we will say that it introduces a lot of propagation delay. We can lose <coughs> some letters. And maybe it's the most important thing is, of course, slow is a very important uh, parameter. Losing a letter is not doesn't happen so often. But if you put letters, you send letters on a certain order, you have absolutely no guarantee that the receiver will receive 
this letter in the same order. That what we call the sequencing in uh, in the so that's what I say here. So we can send only yes, and of course when I give information, especially if I'm using postcard or I can only send a limited amount of information on each letter. But if I want to send more, I have to send it on much more letters. And of course, we have this property of disordering or even losing. And of course, uh, propagation. So if I take my recipe, so it's your turn to, to work now. So define a protocol. And uh, in a way, we can send omelet or give the recipe of omelet to the student because the cook one on omelet, and we give the way for the student to make one on only one omelet. So, what do you think of this? It's nice. So, the cook one on omelet, so we give the recipe. So, <coughs> I don't really have the secretary that manage. Implement the layer, the protocol, and so the secretary cut in two pieces the recipe and send three letters. The student receives the three letters, execute the instruction, and we have an omelet. Yes, so we can have something like this buy some eggs. Then he receives, cook them, and then crack them and beat it until they turn into a pale uh, yellow color. And I think if he had executed the recipe that way, he will never uh, obtain a pale yellow color with the egg. Okay? So here we have a problem because the student does not receive the recipe in the right order. And that's a problem. A uh, property of our postal network is that we can send information <laughs> far away, but we don't respect order. So how we can solve that problem? OK, so but of course, the student, when he will see one, two, three, four, five, etc., he has to know that it's not part of the recipe. So it means that here we have something that was not so obvious before, but here become obvious, is that before, before the student and the cook ask a uh, work on the omelet, they have to meet before and agree on convention. And for example, one convention will be to say that on the postcard, I will send you information, so here, if I look at the postcard, I have part here where it's used for the postal network to carry the information. So I will put the address, the stamp, etc. So this is information needed to communicate with the postal network. Here, I can write anything I want. But in fact, I will cut this into parts. Here, I will put the recipe. And here I will put some protocol information. And I give you how we agree on the way the protocol works. <coughs> so we have defined a format here. And then we have to define behavior on that part only. So when you receive, when you analyze that, how you react. And so that's uh, the definition of protocol. So you say that we number letters. So for example, I put one, two, three. <coughs> it can be not enough because if I put one, two, three, for example, and I lose letter four, I will never notice it. For example, here, I have this situation where I'm sending one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. And here I receive one, I receive two, I receive three, but four is lost. No, but we Repeat. use the same, uh, like a 
Carry the code. Uh, <coughs> certain letter from certain quantity. Yes. So what? Why I had here on three or on four? Yeah. Yeah. So if I put on four here, compared to here on three, here when I know that I have three, I know that I have received all the letter because if it was three letters. Here, if I receive three, I will not react because I know that one letter is missing. So I will not finish my recipe here. Even here, <coughs> I can receive one and say, okay, I buy the eggs and that's all. No, I know that something is missing. So this is one possibility. So we have to tell how many messages belongs to be, are used to create or recreate the original message. So we can do that one, two, three, four, five. On, on one, two, on five, five, for example. But it's not, for a computer, it's not very good. Because I receive a flow of information. And to cut it, and know how many pieces I need, I need to have all the information. And so sometimes I don't have this information when I am sending the first fragment. So instead of putting one, two, three, four, five, another possibility will be to say there is one more, 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 there is no more. It's what we call an M bit. And in a lot of protocol, you will find this information not in the number, but just to say there is more information. And this way, you don't need to receive all, to know I, when you send this one, the size of message you are sending. So it could be more interesting to, to do that. So here, we have a protocol that works. Well, I'm supposed to work, so you will tell me if it's the case if you don't see any uh, any trouble. But here I'm sending first letter, second letter is delayed. I receive third letter, so I know that three on three or three on bit more equal to zero. So I know that this message is the last one, but I have received one, I have received two, I have received three, so two is missing. So I wait for two, and when I have received two, then I do my omelet. Is it fine? It means that when the cook needs one omelet, do we have one omelet? The student should, have, should send a request to the cook. A request? Why? No, so the, the, the second step is delayed. Well, we don't know how, how long he is to wait. Okay, so. It's delay here, so we don't know. The, maybe it's lost. So here we have a problem because if it's lost, we will wait a long time, and you know that eggs, when you wait too much, is not that good. So we have to uh, to anticipate this loss, and maybe in that case, what do we do? Or in the previous case, you see here it's a very exa interesting example. Is that, as I told you this morning, here you know much more by looking at this than the cook or the student. So here for the cook and the student, the, this one and the previous one is equivalent. Lost. So if I have this, so for the cook, I send letter one <coughs> more equal one. I send letter two more equal one. I send letter three more equal one. And for the receiver, I receive one, I receive three. The question is, is that? Or is it delayed? As you say, we don't know. You see it here. Because here you have much more information than the cook or the student. So don't react on that extra information. 
because otherwise you will create some wrong protocol. So when you define your protocol as a cook, you just have to work on information the cook have, and here you have to work on information that just the student have. And so these here in the drawing we carry much information that needed or available for both ends. So as you say, we don't know. Maybe it's lost. Maybe it's delayed. So suppose it's lost. It is lost. We will see the case where it is delayed. So since it's lost, what do we do? So the student may send an acknowledgement when, when he receives the third letter. One possibility, for example, here, because I don't know if it's delay or loss, when I receive three, I know that something is wrong, goes wrong. Because I was expecting two and I received three. So here what can I do is, for example, either to send directly, or here, in this example, I start a timer, because I'm saying first of all, network has some delay, so I will wait one or two days, and if I don't receive the letter two, then I will send a message to the cook. I'm a student, I will send a message to the cook and I will say that, send me again, letter two. And the cook, of course, will send me letter two here. Our secretary took a copy and send it again, and here, I have one omelet. Okay? So does it work? Uh, in fact, here, you see I have an omelet, an omelet, it's fine. But in fact, what I have here, it maybe it's not lost, it's delayed. And here we have to think on local events. Here, as I said, you see too much information. So, for example, here, for the student, the student send letter two is missing, and he received letter two. So what he says? Okay, that's fine. He got he answer very quickly to my request. When I have letter two here. So I can do the omelet. But after that, it received letter three, letter two, and this letter two, of course, is a request the student sent. The answer to the request the student sent. And here, again, we start a timer because we have letter two, so we know that normally there is letter one. And some letter after the letter two because we have uh, M, uh, more bit here. So what I say, I say it's letter one on letter through three and uh, following are missing. <coughs> so the cook send me this letter. And here I have another omelet. So of course here for omelet is not that bad. Not so risky, but for example, if you withdraw 20 euros from your AT an ATM and you have this kind of protocol, so maybe your bank account will uh, be decreased by uh, 40 euros, euros. So it's not a good situation. So maybe we can say that we cannot have two omelets. At that time, you go to your bank, you uh, withdraw. 20 euro, then you go back and I withdraw 20 euro, and your bank says, no, it's not possible that this person withdrew to, to, twice the same amount of money, so I just take one into consideration. So it could be a good situation for you, but I think the bank will change very uh, quickly the protocol. Okay, the students say, okay, that's a possibility, I've finished the omelet. But here, it does that, I have finished the omelet and he received this letter. So he can say, I want to receive letter one and three. So 
Yeah, but I think we continue to have uh, some ambiguities here because if you could want to do another omelet, the student here may say, oh, it's some packet that was old packet or old letter in the postal network, so I don't care. But in fact, the uh, cook wanted two omelets. So I don't think it solved uh, the problem. Maybe I'll reply after every message. So that's another solution. Hmm? That's another solution, but we here we took the hypothesis that we just send messages when we have a trouble, which is not a good solution. <coughs> but that's the hypothesis we we create here. That's a solution. So we say omelet one, omelet two. So here we will save, receive again the omelet number one. So we know that we have already done the omelette number one, so we will not do it. If the cook wants another omelette, it will be omelette number two, and this way we will do it. So it's a possibility. The other possibility is to say that this message is a retransmission, and since we have already received it, we will not care about this retransmission. <coughs> so this is a, another possibility. So here we solve the problems. For example, here we have three runs, and then we will discard the message. So, does it work? So you said it, it doesn't work, because we took the wrong hypothesis. In fact, we acknowledge problems, and we don't acknowledge when it go wrong, uh, go right. So for example, here, we can have this. The cook, so I want to have an omelette. So I send the three letters, and the three letters get lost. So the cook receives no letters from the student, so he say, OK, there is no problem on the student side, and he has made the <coughs> omelette. The student receives ne receive never a letter, never receive a letter. So the student say, OK, I have nothing to do, that's fine. And so I don't do anything. Of course, I cannot request anything to the, to the cook because he doesn't know that the cook wants to make a number. So here, everybody is happy. Everybody lives in its own environment, and everything is fine on its own environment. But globally, it's wrong. But nobody has a global vision of the network. So you cannot, of course you, you have this global vision of the network, but it's just on a classroom, but in reality, you will never have this global vision, but you will have only partial vision of the network. And so here, of course, you cannot uh, solve the problem. So the protocol is wrong by definition. Okay, that's why I did it because just, just, I don't want to show you only things that work fine. But here we have a problem because we never acknowledge good things. And react, we react on bad things. And reacting on bad things is, is not a good serious situation. Because when it goes bad, it's difficult to correct it. So we are, it's better to react on good things. So I have positive acknowledgement. So say, OK, I've received letter 1. OK, I've received letter 2. Oh, here, letter 3 is missing. But we have no acknowledge the other one. And this way, both can work synchronously. Here, we don't have this. Uh, we don't establish a strong relation between both ends. So this is a failure. But next uh, protocol, we will see, it will work better, I promise you. But here it was just uh, a simple example. But now you know the omelet recipe, so you can do it tonight in your, in your room if you, if you want.